Rescue one. Two ones on Essex Street. We have fire show on second floor. Sector 10 is actually an emergency life and survival death plan. And in describing what we do is we're here to save lives. Uh, my name is Pericles de Avila. CEO of Sector 10, as you know. In an incident, one of the most critical events is the minute the incident occurs, right? Your life is in danger. Then you have to survive until the first responders arrive. When you look at Sector 10 products, software capabilities, you have 50, 100,000 products that have been invented over time to address, mitigate, or save your life, right? What we have done as a company is we invented the system that organizes all of those products into a delivery system that's managed by a full integrated software 3D capability. This is where we're different. We're addressing the people's needs as the incident happens and while they wait for the first responders to arrive. It's a little bit of a different concept. You have our products in your building, in your facility, and they address smoke, chemical, biological, they have escape tools for you to escape. So in essence, you've addressed your life gap needs, those initial critical needs. My name is Larry Madison and uh, I'm the CFO of Sector 10. In light of 9-11 with the tragedy that occurred there, uh, Pericles' idea, his vision, his product uh, is, involves emergency response equipment and pre-deploying the equipment into the facilities before a disaster or an emergency happens. So that's the whole purpose of it is to bridge, of what we call bridge the survival gap. There's many facets to the product that are very beneficial, not only the supplies that come with it, but there's also the software that's involved with it as tracking software. And the, the benefit of the tracking software is it can monitor positions of everybody that's in the company and, and the locations of, that, of any specific person. We have different variations of the products. Uh, they're geared for high-rise buildings. They can be geared for commercial buildings. They can be geared for residential condominium buildings. We have different types of products to go in different things like that. We also have units that can go into high traffic areas that would be in like uh, the airports, as you mentioned. It could be in, in uh, arenas or convention halls or things of that nature or malls or whatever. Uh, so we try to bring our technology together to better address how post-event you would be able to address your own needs and still stay in touch. Our system is also providing information that allows the first responders to track the situation. They can open cameras within the system to see inside of a building if it's on fire. They can get temperature readings. They can get uh, smoke readings. They can see if there's chemical or biologicals in an area remotely. So it allows you remote ac access to the different areas that you would never have. From a first responder perspective, when you arrive, you don't have any information. Information is key. You need to know where your, your shutoff valves are. You need to know where your stairwells are. You need to know where your fire escapes are. You need to know where your alarm system panels are. You need to know where your people are. During this type of situation, there's a lot of information you need to know. There's a lot of information that you need to manage. Our software allows all of this information that would otherwise be scattered to come together in a 3D system, right? You're able to see people where they are in a 3D environment. You're able to see shutoff valves in a 3D environment. You're able to see where your first responders are within that environment. You're able to communicate with them. You're able to see video. You're able to get feedback. Uh, Sector 10, just to step back for about a year, uh, we acquired a public company uh, in November of 2007. We have taken the last year, the company is a development stage company, which means is we're, we were not out operating, uh, doing full, full bore with the product sales and things of that nature at this point in time. 
That is all changing at this point. We have restructured the company so that the public company is our complete sales distribution channel for the Sector 10 products. Uh, we have worked with various partners, one of which is our manufacturing partner, where we have a tremendous relationship. The manufacturing partner is, uh, is our outsourced manufacturer, and we have a tremendous relationship where we are sharing or we're working together on, on how to build the product, the, uh, the, the, uh, the capacity needs, and all the manufacturing issues that come into play. Well, we, we have the capacity to produce thousands of units a week. I was very fortunate to find uh, a manufacturer here in the States who has the capacity and 60 years of experience in manufacturing allows us to manufacture the product, the product that we can market into our consumer base. And it's made in the U.S. Made with U.S. steel, U.S. labor. Uh, so now we are building it in the U.S. Because we're providing the system under a uh, lease package, okay, it allows our consumer, the, the people that are putting our products in place, to have a minimal impact costs to their expenses, right? And it allows us, as a company, to grow very fast because we don't have 60 and 90 days accounts receivable. The minute that we deliver the products, the financing company that we're working with under a Sector 10 label would automatically provide the, the uh, financing to us. The vision of Sector 10, from my perspective, is to be the premier company in providing emergency response equipment. Our focus is to save lives, or to provide a service that can save lives, and to bridge that survival gap that we talked about. Uh, that's our primary focus. And I firmly believe that the product that we have the capabilities are there, and once it's once it's out into the public, I think the market potential is 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 very tremendous. We have a couple different strategies on where we're we're, we're going. Initially, we're looking at the the market of the high-rise buildings. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, real estate you know real estate uh, holding companies that uh, own some of the large facilities. Uh, third level is the schools, the uh, colleges in particular. We're talking to several colleges right now where we can put in our, our, our products in some of their main facilities, their library facilities, their unions, where large gatherings people are, and they seem to very much, they're very interested in that perspective. And the third, and the fourth thing would be the, uh, the government sector, and we're ultimately gonna be getting into that. I really can't tell the investor why and when and how we should feel about investing in the company, but I do ask the investor to look at what we're doing how it's impacting the communities in general, right? And then simple math, right? If you find that we're providing a service to the community, then you have to think about how many buildings there are in this country, for every one of our large cities that would benefit from this product. We want to provide our investors with a benefit, right? We also want them to look at what we're doing and how it's going to impact and benefit where he lives, in his community, in his buildings, in case of a disaster or terror or whatever else. You know, Sector 10 wasn't built as a typical corporation. It was built as grassroots. We want to deliver life-saving equipment into the communities. We want to make it economically feasible that people can attain this equipment, sustain themselves with minimal impact, and, uh, and we're going to need everyone to participate if it's going to be a success, right? Uh, we have wonderful partners. Uh, we think that we have brought a great team together. Now it's going to be up to uh, our, our markets response and our investors response and how we uh, bring all this about.